Holy crap, is there a lot of rumors coming out about Kingpin in the MCU. Like a Marvel producer just confirmed that he's the new Thanos? Nani? We've also had a ton of new rumors about Kingpin in Spider-Man 4. And there's even been some absolutely insane things being thrown around, like the fact that Kingpin likely owns Avengers Tower, and that there's a Civil War 2 coming to the Marvel Cinematic Universe. So in this video, I'm going to gather up all the information that's out there and explain to you why the plan for the Kingpin might be just what the MCU needs. Here we Go. So right now, Marvel Studios is doing a lot of press for the Echo Show. And obviously, the Kingpin is a huge part of the Echo Show, as this is going to be Maya Lopez and her story of the past and also her story of the future as she reconciles with the Kingpin. And one of the recent interviews, there were some things said that made some major waves in the Marvel fandom. So number one, this is Brad Winderbaum, who's a producer on Echo, producer over at Marvel Studios. And this is him talking about Kingpin as the new new Thanos. It feels like Wilson Fisk is kind of like the Thanos of this street level uh, corner of the MCU. Uh, is that the case going forward? Is he is he kind of like what we're building towards? Oh man, you, 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 you kind of hit the nail on the head. I can't say too much, uh, only that, um, that, you know, as a chapter in Wilson Fisk's life, this is a crucial one and um, and sets the stage in some remarkable ways for what's coming next. That's pretty crazy and lines up with a lot of rumors that are out there. But man, when it's said like that, like as the Thanos of the street level Marvel stuff, that's pretty freaking wild. And even though they're being hush hush about this, there are a lot of rumors that explain what this plan is. So this all has to do with Wilson Fisk running for mayor of New York City. And the rumors are that you'll see that kind of established in the Echo show. You'll see that really happen in the Daredevil show, and then by the time Spider-Man 4 rolls around, Wilson Fisk will be the mayor of New York City, and will likely outlaw vigilantes. And something else really interesting just happened where you had Vincent D'Onofrio answering questions from Brandon Davis over at comicbook.com, and he seemed to hint that it's possible Kingpin was the person that bought the Avengers Tower. And then later on, Brandon got Brad Winterbaum to admit that you will find out who bought Avengers Tower by the end of the Echo Show. Now that's pretty freaking crazy in it of itself, right? Like what if Wilson Fisk is the person that bought Avengers Tower? That would make sense. It would be Fisk Tower. But there was another established rumor that I'm really interested in seeing, you know, how is this going to play out? Now, this was all about Mephisto. I know it's not a meme. It's not a joke. Like this, there were real reports about Mephisto coming into the MCU played by Sasha Baron Cohen. In fact, those rumors, as far as I understand it, are still real. And Sasha Baron Cohen was supposed to be in the Ironheart show. Now, Ironheart is getting a ton of reshoots this year. They're changing it a lot, and it's going to be coming out in 2025 now. But what's interesting is Mephisto was rumored to be the person that bought Avengers Tower. And technically speaking, nobody confirmed that it was Wilson Fisk that bought the tower. I think they just confirmed that you'll find out who it was at the end of the Echo Show. So it's possible they scrapped the whole Mephisto buying the tower thing, or maybe Mephisto did buy the tower and he's working with Wilson Fisk or something like that. Oh my God. I mean, it would be really crazy if you saw Fisk interacting with Mephisto, like if things got that wild, I would be like really into it. I don't know how well that would go with normies or whatever, but either way, it's one of those two, right? Maybe it's just Fisk, maybe it's Fisk and Mephisto, and I kind of can't believe I'm saying that, but I'm saying it. Now, another thing that's really crazy connected to Wilson Fisk slash The Echo Show has been this development of the Marvel Spotlight. You probably already know this, but Marvel Spotlight is a new banner under Marvel Studios where you're going to get a lot more mature, bloody, violent content. Something like the Marvel Max imprint from the past of Marvel Comics. But what you might not know, because it's relatively recently released information, is the fact that they came up with that while doing post work on Echo. And I think that's kind of code words for as we were trying to fix the Echo show. 
because Brad Winderbaum indicated that they came up with that idea during post. And that just, to me, means there were probably things that weren't working and they decided to put a hard edge on the show, which really helped things. And the reason I think that is because in another interview, Vincent D'Onofrio was talking about this. He said, literally, this was something we came up with in post and my character works better in this darker tone. I realized that um, there's a tone in Echo, a mature kind of tone, where I believe that my character is presented best in. And I felt like the reason why I recognized that is because while I was, while we were performing it, I realized that whether the audience had ever seen, uh, when they watch it, have whether they have ever seen the original Daredevil or not, they're gonna get that same feeling as they did in Daredevil when when I first come on screen. They're they're going to feel uneasy about him, and 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 I think that works. I think Fisk works best in that kind of. Tone. Vincent D'Onofrio has also said that he can guarantee the coming Daredevil Born Again show will be under the Marvel Spotlight banner. And this is likely because just like with Echo, they stopped everything and are trying to remake the Daredevil Born Again show, doing rewrites, making changes, and I think ultimately putting that hard edge back on the show. And I think this partially because there were older interviews with Vincent D'Onofrio where he was speaking to something like the opposite of this. He was talking about how the Born Again show is going to be very different than the Netflix show. So you kind of put two and two together there, and it seems like that's probably something that was holding the Daredevil show back, was its tone, its inability to get really gritty and dark and do crazy violence with the Kingpin. And that's really freaking dope, because again, Spider-Man 4 is supposed to have the Kingpin in it. It's supposed to really be this street-level Civil War movie. So let's stop for a second and discuss that. Now, this is kind of like a long-standing rumor, but more recent. Recently, the account Cryptic HD did say on Twitter that Spider-Man 4 is likely to be a street-level civil war. And other scoopers and insiders kind of chimed in and said it's something like a civil war for street-level characters in the MCU, but it's also like Devil's Reign. And I'm adding my own personal speculation here. I think it's a little bit like Siege and Dark Avengers as well. Because we also know that Thunderbolt Ross is going to become president of the United States. That's going to happen. And that's a big part of Captain America 4. So it's possible the Sokovia Accords or some version of the Sokovia Accords are going to return. And with all of that in mind, it just makes sense that you'd have Spider-Man dealing with Fisk being the mayor, outlawing vigilantes. I mean, Tom kind of just got into the point where he's now the friendly neighborhood Spider-Man and Wilson Fisk is going to tell him you can't do that anymore. You're a vigilante. That's illegal. And the fact that Daredevil's also supposed to be in Spider-Man 4 just really makes sense. You're going to have Daredevil and Spider-Man fighting against Wilson Fisk and a lot of villains. And I think the villains are likely to be elevated to the level of official hero or something like that. And that's where the dark Avengers theme comes in, right? Because in Marvel Comics, Norman Osborn becomes the like ruler of of the Avengers, he leads the Avengers, and he kicks all the heroes out and hires all these villains and, and presents them as heroes to the public, right? So the Thunderbolts become the Dark Avengers. I wonder if something like that's gonna be happening in the MCU as well. And so that's how you get to the Civil War II, with Wilson Fisk being the mayor of New York City, likely outlawing vigilantes, and you'll probably see some of the street-level heroes either agree to this, or maybe you'll even see some of the villains go join up with Wilson Fisk, and that's gonna be a lot of the stuff that happens in Spider-Man 4. But there's an outside chance that it even gets bigger than that because, of course, this also ties into a lot of stuff with Falcon and the Winter Soldier and Captain America 4, and mostly this has to do with super soldiers. There's like an arms race for super soldiers and enhanced beings happening right now in Marvel. In fact, a lot of people think Wilson Fisk himself likely has some level of super soldier serum, and that's going to explain how he survives the gunshot at the end of Echo. But also, if you remember, this dude got got hit by a car and some trick arrows and took an arrow out of his own chest. So something is clearly going on with Wilson Fisk, likely connected to super soldier serum. And it's also possible that that connects to 
to Thunderbolt Ross. Maybe even the same kind of thing happening with Thunderbolt Ross. And for whatever reason, he goes Hulk with it, maybe because of his exposure to Gamma and Banner. Timing for all of this is really up in the air, but the overall point is that Marvel has incredible plans for Wilson Fisk and the Kingpin. It really does seem like he's going to be the Thanos of at least the street level Marvel stuff and maybe the Thanos just in general of the Earthbound Avengers? I mean, at this point, why not? We need a lot of other villains to step up to the plate if they are really going away from the Council of Kangs and from Kang in general, and I think Vincent D'Onofrio as the Kingpin is an excellent choice. Of course, let me know what you think about this in the comment section below, and as I always say, I hope you're having an awesome and a nerdy day, and I'll see you in the next video.